Hey guys, so it's such a nice day out today. I thought I would make my video outside, and I've got the company of my cat behind me. I don't know if you can see him in the window there. So it's pretty good. Um, today we've got a few things going on today, so I'm going to start with the Congress of Vienna and move through this very fast, bang it out, because we got the exam tomorrow. Okay, ready? So with great movement forward comes great movement. Get it? <laughs> Two of the largest isms that sprung out of the Industrial Revolution were liberalism and nationalism. Liberalism is the political belief of favoring maximum individual liberty and that traditional concepts are dispensable, invalidated, or like likable or liable to change. I can't speak today. Through this spirit of advancement and industrialization came nationalism. Extreme, an extreme form of patriotic feeling, principles, or efforts. It sometimes results in a feeling of superiority over other countries and people. However, with eagerness comes caution. In any period, there will always be conservatives, those who uphold to traditional values and approaching change with caution. I know I spoke about communism, socialism, and capitalism in the last video, but I just want to point out all these isms and new belief systems to you during the Industrial Revolution, pre, post, during, like all that stuff. They emerged then and kind of lasted with us until now. Um, I don't really know where to put this segment, um, since all these new, new ideas, like I just said, sprang up kind of like in this random time period of like industrialization and before that and then after that and the Enlightenment and all that crazy stuff. So I'm just going to jump right ahead to the Congress of Vienna. Okay, so um, basically for the Congress of Vienna, everyone was angry at Napoleon because he was waging the Napoleonic Wars and all that crazy stuff and like conquering all of uh, Europe and everybody hated him and he got tons of enemies and yeah, so on and so forth. So Russia, Great Britain, Prussia, Austria, and Spain teamed up to get back at France. This led to the abdication of Napoleon, who was then exiled to the island of Elba, which we've talked about before. With Napoleon in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by tons of water, the rest of Europe wanted to discuss uh, the continent's future, so they decided to host a conference in Austria. Five representatives from Prussia, Russia, Austria, Great Britain, and France made up the Congress of Vienna which took place during September of 1815. They, they unanimously agreed that no single state, especially France in this situation, should be allowed to control or dominate all of Europe. To prevent this from happening, they decided to reestablish the monarchy in France, giving it a Bourbon king, so kind of going back to the Louis, uh, and force them to pay compensation for the damages made by Napoleon. Oh, fun fact, they happened to pay, I think, like 7 million francs for all their damages. It was ridiculous. So, um, the Congress also kind of, like, refixed the borders, um, to what they had previously been, but since Napoleon was, like, the Houdini of escaping from islands in the middle of nowhere, uh, he came back to France, uh, reclaimed power, yet was sent to exile again, and died on the island of St. Elba. So his one-time island escaping fame was, like I just said, one time. And that's it. So there you go, all the isms of this time period, and the Congress of Vienna, and the Napoleonic Wars. So, wow, three minutes, and now 36 seconds. Woo! Good luck tomorrow, and I'll be back in uh, briefly.